Welcome to Installation and Maintenance of Health IT Systems. This is Unit 2, System Selection, Software, and Certification. This component covers fundamentals of selection, installation, and maintenance of typical EHR systems. This unit, System Selection, Software, and Certification, will discuss the differences in COTS and in-house homegrown systems and how to select the system to meet the needs of the end users. There are many important steps to choosing the correct system for your institution and ensuring that it will be quickly adopted by your users. Discussions will begin with COTS, commercial off the shelf, and MOTS, modifiable off the shelf, versus in-house software products, their advantages and disadvantages, along with costs associated with them. We'll discuss EHR certification and meaningful use criteria with regard to EHR systems. Finally, we will touch on some typical costs associated with selection and implementation of EHR systems. COTS, or commercial off the shelf, is a term used to describe a product that is implemented as is, while MOTS, or modifiable off the shelf, refers to a commercially available software product which can be, to some extent, modified by the purchaser, vendor, or contractor to better suit the purchaser's specific needs. For the purposes of this discussion, we will refer to both variants as COTS products. COTS systems are designed by a software vendor to address the needs of many different purchasers. The services provided are the most popular and often most generic that are desired by the majority of the customer base. Most software can be considered COTS, operating systems, office productivity software, and internet communication programs are examples. Because it can be sold to a larger market, COTS software may be available at a relatively low cost. At present, well over 200 software companies offer some sort of off-the-shelf EHR solution. Some of these solutions include freeware solutions, which are open source products freely available for use with commercial support. There are several advantages to buying complete off-the-shelf products. For starters, vendor companies have already put upfront costs associated with developing and testing the product. This is especially advantageous for smaller healthcare settings that cannot afford an extensive IT development team. As part of the rollout process, vendors often will work with the clinical IT teams to ensure the product is successfully integrated within the healthcare setting and plays well with pre-existing software components. When things do go wrong, the vendor provides additional troubleshooting and usually works with the IT staff to resolve glitches and bugs. The COTS products also generally have previously developed training documentation. This can mean that difficulties in learning the new system have been addressed in previous installations at other institutions. Because the vendor generally has already created training programs and materials to help ensure a successful adoption of the product into the workplace, users and administrators can often be brought up to speed faster than with an in-house product. Because many EHR systems are proprietary, access to the source code is often limited or non-existent. This reduces the flexibility of the program and makes the institution dependent on the vendor to make enhancements to the system, which is often costly. Compatibility is also a concern, as EHR vendors must contend with an ever-increasing variety of hardware and software combinations. Add in the staggering number of drivers, peripherals, testing devices, and so on, and it becomes obvious that there is no way the vendor can test compatibility for all possible combinations. The issue is compounded with every new upgrade, which holds the potential to break something that was working perfectly in the earlier version. If a COTS product is in your institution's future, you will need a plan that adequately addresses which users will receive upgrades and when, as well as contingency plans for use in the event that the upgrade is not successful. Be sure that an adequate test environment exists in your institution and that upgrades are thoroughly tested before deployment. Each vendor is different with regard to frequency of upgrades. 
Reputable vendors theoretically are motivated to maintain a high level of product quality. However, this is not a guarantee. Keep open lines of communication with your vendor and stay abreast of product issues and pending upgrades. Never assume the vendor will meet upgrade release dates and never assume a certain level of quality until you have tested the product in your own institution's environments. Another disadvantage to purchasing a COTS product is the inability to find a product that fits your institution just perfectly, often requiring workflow changes on an institutional level for successful adoption of the product. Some institutions decide to build their own in-house EHR solution. In-house software is developed by the operating institution and installed and managed by an existing IT team. This kind of development is only undertaken by larger organizations with their own IT departments. Development of an EHR system will often start through extension of existing in-house systems. Alternatively, the institution may elect to use an open source or otherwise modifiable system and, depending on the software license, adapt it solely for its own use or participate in further public development by contributing changes back to the source. More often than not, the decision to build an EHR in-house is driven by the desire to make a product that can fully integrate with existing software and or closely match institutional processes and objectives. The existing IT infrastructure and personnel will guide development of the system to ensure maximum compatibility with existing processes. There are several obstacles to creating your own in-house EHR solution. First of all, you need to have the right team in place. If you decide to build an in-house solution, you will be spending a lot of time, money, and energy in recruiting and retaining quality IT developers capable of implementing such a large-scale project. Not many people take into consideration the costs involved in recruiting and hiring the right software development team, along with the associated hardware and software needed to develop, compile, and test coding components. You should expect to expend years of effort and dedicated resources toward the development and implementation process of an in-house EHR solution. Secondly, you should have a person capable of monitoring and assessing the quality of the work, the output, and the productivity of the team hired. This consultant or project manager represents another added expense. Likewise, your IT team will need to stand on its own when testing, troubleshooting, debugging, or adding enhancements to the EHR system throughout the product's entire life cycle. This takes lots of time and resources. Products developed by vendors have the advantage of multiple clients providing feedback and bug reporting. Lastly, before the product can be successfully rolled out to your users, Planning programs and materials must be created, generally, from scratch. Given these obstacles, it's not surprising that many healthcare institutions, especially those that are not large institutions with adequate resources, choose to go with a COTS or MOTS software solution. The Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, or ONC, as empowered by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, provides for a certification program for health information technology providers and systems. According to the ONC, certification of health IT will provide assurance to purchaser and other users that an EHR system or other relevant technology offers the necessary technological capability, functionality, and security to help them meet the meaningful use criteria established for a given phase. Providers and patients must also be confident that the electronic health IT products and systems they use are secure, can maintain data confidentiality, and can work with other systems to share information. Given that the use of a certified system means eligibility for payments from Medicare and Medicaid incentive programs, up to $44,000 for individual practitioners and over $2 million for participating hospitals, there is a strong incentive for any EHR system or module to become certified. A final rule on an initial set of standards, implementation specifications, and certification criteria for adoption by the HHS Secretary was issued on July 13, 2010. This final rule represents the first step in an incremental approach to adopting standards, implementation specifications, and certification criteria to enhance interoperability, functionality, utility, and the security of health IT, and to support its meaningful use. 
The certification criteria adopted in this initial set establish the required capabilities and related standards and implementation specifications that certified EHR technology will need to include in order to, at a minimum, support the achievement of meaningful use stage one by eligible professionals and eligible hospitals under the Medicaid EHR incentive programs. Certification of EHR systems accomplishes four major goals. It reduces the risks to investment in EHR systems, which represent a sizable business investment, by providing additional assurance that the system is worthwhile. It may facilitate interoperability between EHR systems as multiple systems would adhere to the same set of standards. As mentioned previously, certification is a prerequisite for Medicare and Medicaid incentive payments, along with other stimulus incentives. Finally, certification requires that EHR systems and networks protect the privacy of personal health information. Choosing to narrow your search to certified EHR products allows you, as the evaluator, to be assured that each of the certified software products will meet similar standards for basic functionality, interoperability, and security. This will allow you to focus your evaluation more on any special or unusual needs of your institution. It's important to note that interoperability is at an early stage and requirements for interoperability are still being established. Note, certification examines only the system itself and does not evaluate the company's service aspects or financial solvency. You should perform this type of due diligence yourself. It is important to know that your vendor has a good reputation and plans to provide continuous support for your software throughout the product's life cycle. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, more commonly known as ERA, or referred to as the stimulus bill, is the economic package passed by the U.S. Congress in February 2009. Of the $787 billion in expenditures, $22 billion were allocated to facilitate modernization of health information technology systems. The High Tech Act, part of the stimulus package, aims to induce more, more physicians to adopt EHRs with potential payments of more than $40,000 a year via Medicare or more than $60,000 a year via Medicaid during the initial years. Starting in 2015, failure to meaningfully use health IT has led to financial penalties, starting with a 1% reduction in Medicare reimbursement and growing over time. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services in 2015 announced their Stage 3 Meaningful Use Criteria for EHR use. The objectives for hospitals and providers are to protect patient health information, provide clinical decision support, utilize computerized provider order entry, or CPOE, and electronic prescribing. They expect the providers to use health information exchange, provide patient-specific education, perform medication reconciliation for their patients, Allow their patients electronic access through patient portals or other means, utilize secure messaging, and utilize the EHR to improve the public health. We will look at each of these a little bit more in depth. For protecting patient health, all providers as a part of the HIPAA security rule are expected to conduct or review a security risk analysis addressing the security including encryption of protected health information that would be individually identifiable data. They are also expected to utilize clinical decision support. They can either implement five clinical decision support interventions for four more quality measures. They are also expected to utilize clinical decision support. They can either implement five clinical decision support interventions they can either implement five clinical decision support interventions for four or more quality measures, and they have to enable implement and they have to enable and implement drug drug and drug allergy intervention checks for the entire reporting period. For computerized provider order entry or CPOE, there are three measures, and that is that 60% of their medical orders have to be utilizing CPOE, 30% of lab orders and 30% of radiology orders also have to utilize CPOE. So the expectation is that providers will be using CPOE to place their orders. For electronic prescribing, more than 50% of permissible prescriptions 
need to be queried for drug formulary and transmitted using Certified Electronic Health Record Technology, or CEHRT. For health information exchange, it is required that the provider uses the Certified Electronic Health Record Technology to create a summary of care and electronically transmit the summary for more than 10% of the transitions. These transitions could be to specialists or could be from a specialist to a primary care provider or from a hospital to a nursing home or just different providers or settings of care. So whenever you would have a transition or referral, the expectation would be that you would electronically transmit that data more than 10% of the time. With patient-specific education, the knowledge base within the Certified Electronic Health Record Technology should provide information, and that needs to be provided to 10% of unique patients who have office visits. Medication reconciliation needs to be performed for more than 50% of transitions in care, and patient electronic access and for patient electronic access, greater than 50% of all unique patients must be provided timely access to view, download, and transmit their data. At least one patient needs to view, download, and at least one patient needs to view, download, or transmit their data to a third party. Secure messaging has three different levels. In 2015, there needed to be the capacity for patients to send and receive. In 2016, secure messages need to be sent to the patient using electronic messaging function or in response to a secure message for at least one patient. In 2017, the secure messaging functionality for 2016 needs to be used for more than 5% of unique patients. For the first measure of public health, eligible providers are expected to be in active engagement with a public health agency to submit immunization data. And the active engagement relates to the ability to and the active engagement relates to the ability of the public health agency to accept it or not. Not all public health agencies have that capability yet. Measure 2 is the same for syndromic surveillance reporting. For measure three, the specialized registry reporting, the provider needs to be submitting data to a specialized registry, and that specialized registry would depend on the type of provider, primary care versus specialty. Finally, we look at the meaningful use and the next stages, and meaningful use will evolve beginning in 2019. Providers will be reimbursed under the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, or MIPS, and this will roll together the PQRS and Meaningful Use. It will also include other activities. So there would be the quality measures. There are measures also related to resource use. Practices would have to undertake improvement activities, as well as meaningfully use Certified Electronic Health Record Technology, for a MIPS composite performance score that ranges from 0 to 100. This would determine whether or not their payments are adjusted positively or negatively. Startup costs include new hardware and network components, including servers, switches, cabling, racks, software components, including purchasing software components, including purchasing and licensing the EHR product, along with any customization and support contracts, and interfaces, including laptops, workstations, PDAs, and so on. Bear in mind that licensing options vary, and different licensing options may be available for each product. As an example, a single user license or tiered pricing, where the fees are different depending on the level of access the user has to the system, may be quite viable for a small practice. On the other hand, site licensing, a single fee covering all potential employees for an entity, may be a more viable option for larger entities, but far too costly for the smaller practice settings. Maintenance costs include all costs associated with the continued upkeep, maintenance, and upgrades to the system. This would include routine hardware replacements, software support fees, licensing renewals, and major upgrades. 
Training costs include fees incurred by the vendor to train new system users and admin Training costs include fees incurred by the vendor to train new system users and administration during startup, as well as training materials, simulators, etc. throughout the life cycle of the product. What are the anticipated productivity costs associated with the implementation of this product? Are the users going to have to make significant changes in workflow resulting in substantial loss in productivity? Lastly, what consults Lastly, what consultants will you need to bring in to implement the installation? Wireless and network upgrades may require consultation to ensure optimal results. Will you be bringing in an implementation specialist at $125 an hour? Be sure to consider these costs when selecting an EHR system. This concludes Unit 2 System Selection, Software, and Certification. In summary, when choosing a system, be aware of broad categories of systems available for selection. Weigh the advantages and disadvantages of them, paying special attention to the required resources for development and maintenance. Certification of systems should be strongly considered. Finally, any system that is considered and implemented should address the meaningful use priorities.